who are you in relation to God? How do you see yourself? How do you understand yourself? Are you still holding on to what the world has spoken over you? Past abusive relationships have spoken over you? Are you still holding on? Is that your identity? Or are you going to adopt the identity that, that God speaks over you? Welcome to the Journey Podcast. I'm Doug McAllister for Journey Fellowship Church. And joining me today in the studio is Pastor Al Sharche. He's our next step pastor here at Journey, as well as the director of Celebrate Recovery. That's and me. joining us as our special guest today is Christine Burns. Christine, Christine, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Glad you're here. What I want you to do, Christine, is just tell your testimony. Mm -hmm. I know, and Pastor, I know you know a lot about Christine's story, so you feel free to interject and uh, and comment along the way but uh anyway just introduce yourself christine mm -hmm. kind of tell us a little bit about yourself um i'm a mother of three boys um i am i don't know yeah <laughs> I'm me. Yeah. No. You are you. I'm me. That works out good. So I thought I saw you. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from St. Bernard Parish. Did you grow up there? Were you born and raised there in St. Bernard? What part of the parish are you from? Yeah. Yeah. Down the road, girl. Yeah. When did you move to the North Shore? After Hurricane Katrina. Yeah. So you've been here for a long time. Yeah. 15 years. Whenever. Yeah. Moved right after Katrina. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your life before Jesus, about what your testimony is kind of built on what God, how God found you. Okay. Um, my story goes way back to my childhood. Um, my dad was an alcoholic and he was very abusive. Um, and my mom was verbally abusive. So I grew up not knowing love, yes. you know, not feeling love It's conditional love, um, which kind of shaped my choices through my life. Yeah. Um, I did get, I got married twice. I was married first um, to my three boys, had three boys, their dad. Yeah. And um, we were married about nine years and um, infidelity. So we got divorced. How old are your boys now? They are 28, 30, and 32. So they're all grown. They're grown. Are they married themselves? Two of them are. Yeah. Yes. So two. you have grandkids? No, not yet. None? None yet. So you have, you have one in the military, right? He's retired now. So they're trying to have nice. a baby. Oh, yeah. really? So your oldest? No, my middle, actually. Your middle. Mm -hmm. was in, what, what he branch? was in the Navy. Wow. And he was out of San Diego. Yeah, and he, he's married? Yes. And then uh, who else is married of the three? My youngest. Yeah, so your oldest is still single. He's still single. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so you have three grown boys. Three grown boys. Yeah, and you got married a second time, you said? Yes. I got married um, about two years after I got divorced. Um, unfortunately, he passed away after four years. Oh, he was sorry. an alcoholic and yeah. liver failure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my first husband was alcoholic too, so I have yeah. a have a pattern, obviously. Yeah. But um, so after that, that was before Katrina, two thousand two, he passed away. Yeah. So my um, grief was pretty bad. I was trying to do it on my own, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, so I decided my boys might be better off moving in with the dad, so they have that male figure. Yeah. Cause they were all getting up to middle school age. Yeah. So um, of course that caused me a lot of guilt and shame because mm -hmm. I felt like I gave up my kids, mm -hmm. even though I was very involved in their life. Where did their dad live? In Slidell. <laughs> oh, so you were still in in St. Bernard. Yeah. And they came to live on the North yes. Shore. Yes, yes. Yeah, so that caused you a lot of grief and mm -hmm. pain. Yeah. yeah and was your second husband already passed away by then? Yes. Oh. Yeah, this was after he passed so away. So this had to be a really dark time in your life then, huh? You lost yeah. your husband, you lose your boys. Yeah. 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 You want to answer that? Oh. I thought you were pointing at me. No. Okay. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like to point at you when you're not looking, but you, <laughs> you caught me that time. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> well, you got my attention. Yeah. So that'd be a dark period of mm -hmm. your life. And what, 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 um, what was happening with you personally then? I was lost. Yeah. I just, you know, working and I didn't feel like I had a home anymore. I didn't yeah. feel grounded. I just yeah. felt lost. Yeah. You know, and being that at that time, I didn't ask God to help me. Yeah. I was alone. Yeah. You know, didn't have any family right. to support me or anything. So your mom and dad had passed away already? No. Yeah. They just weren't involved, weren't involved. in your life. Mm -mm. Yeah. Do you have brothers or sisters? One sister. Yeah. 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 But we haven't been close, unfortunately. Yeah. So you brought all of that pain from your childhood into your first marriage which only compounded your pain mm -hmm. and then your divorce and then you're three, trying to raise three boys alone mm -hmm. and then your boys went to live with their dad and your second mm -hmm. husband had passed so you were just at, a, at an end 
of you know hope and mm -hmm. basically yeah. you know life yeah, yeah. surviving not yeah. living what, yeah. what would you do for a living what i work you? at a health insurance company yeah i've been there 25 plus years in oh, the wow. business 27 oh wow yeah so. yeah wow i went back to work after my we got divorced when my baby was one and yeah. that's the field i went into yeah so i've been doing that ever since what kind of struggles did you personally go through before you met christ what was your what was the greatest obstacle that you were battling um being in abusive relationships yeah and how did that manifest in you was it depression or anger depression or? lots yeah. of depression yeah 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 how'd you deal with it i did start therapy did you after katrina yeah yeah and so i got put on meds yeah um my relationship after my husband passed away he was abusive also yeah and he's the one who broke me oh. so um my depression just kept getting worse and worse and worse and yeah. nothing was really working because i was in there trying to fix what i was told was wrong with me yeah instead of what was really going on yeah so i wasn't healing and the medicine just kept you know, three four different meds yeah, yeah. um and nothing ever changed nothing changed um he gaslighted a lot so i was yeah. thought I was going crazy at the yeah. time. But um, so at yeah. one point in therapy, one of his things he would like to do was lecture for hours, mm -hmm. up to five hours at a time, which sounds crazy now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I told my therapist, I said something about it. She, I never told her this was like 10 years into therapy. Yeah. And she said, you know, that's abuse, right? And yeah. I'm, no. <laughs> yeah. That was the light bulb. Really? That is when I decided I need to try to leave. Yeah. So I had to, you know, come up with a plan, not let him know I was going to leave, yeah. find a place to live, pretend everything was the same for a few months, and then leave when he wasn't there mm -hmm. because I was afraid of how he would react. Did you do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he was, uh, he was away at a hunting camp or something? Yes. So, yeah. yeah, share that if you don't mind. Sure. Like, because that's a, I think it's a part of abuse that a lot of women experience. Mm -hmm. that they aren't exactly sure. And not, not that I want to give a plan or a layout, but I do think it's important for people to know, like, hey, you, you don't, if you're being physically and emotionally, you know, battered and beaten, that's not God's plan for your life. Mm -hmm. To stay there right. and suck that up for five hours at a time each and every day while he's drinking more and more and, you know, whatever else is going on mm -hmm. there. I think it was very brave and courageous to make a plan and to finally put something into into action so that you can get from where you were mm -hmm. to where God wants you to be. So would you just share a little bit about that? Um, yeah, I mean, um, once I decided, well, first I was like, I think I'm going to leave. So I talked yeah. to each of my boys separately. Yeah. And um, How old were they at the time? It was five years ago. Um, okay. So they're in their 20s? 20s. Yeah. Yeah, 20s. So you told them you were doing it? I told them I was thinking about doing it okay. first. All right. And they're like, we support you. We don't like them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and I told them separately. I had like conversations. Mm -hmm. And I went to see my son who was in the Navy in California. Yeah. He was the last one. And when I got there, I immediately told him what that I was thinking of doing. And then five minutes later, I said, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Because I was out of the atmosphere for like a week and realized, yeah. Yeah. oh, there is a yeah. life not yeah. being in there yeah so then i had to find a place to live and i didn't want to move to slidell because he knew that dad lived here and he'd probably look for me in slidell mm -hmm. so um i ended up finding a place in pearl river but it took me about three months yeah try you know taking off of work to go look at houses yeah doing things late at night you know right. did everything through the phone and yeah. everything um yeah. and i found a place he um would go hunting for thanksgiving yeah. i had a plan to leave the Monday after Thanksgiving, and he wouldn't leave on Thanksgiving Day. He mm -hmm. just kept hanging around, hanging mm -hmm. around. And finally he left, and he said, I won't be back unless I catch a couple of deer to get them processed. He catch, does two deer yeah. on Thanksgiving. Yeah. So then I'm freaking out. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm, my ex-husband had a cousin who was a cop, like, what should we do? But he didn't come all the way home, so we were able to switch the date. Mm -hmm. Me and my boys moved myself out into my new place mm -hmm. and then he called me the night we were moving because a nosy neighbor told him he saw a u-haul mm. so instead of just saying well i don't know what you're talking about i just said i'm moving out yeah and he didn't know what to say to that initially yeah, yeah. but um and i had furniture which i had bought so yeah. 
I left him with no furniture. Yeah. You know, and he wasn't happy about that, but <laughs> <laughs> he has a house. He built a brand new house. Well, so, it was you your know, furniture. Yeah. It was my, I was paying on it, so yeah. I was taking it. Yeah. <laughs> I took whatever I could. Yeah. I didn't have long to pack up, yeah. you know, but I took what I could. Yeah. You know, and then I moved and never went back. Right. And how long did he live after you left? Well, this is not that was after. Second, so this that's is a, after my that's second. Another husband. relationship after her second husband. Oh, died. gotcha. I didn't realize that. I yes. That transition. Oh yeah. Right. yeah. This so is after. Hu- this happened after your second husband passed. Then. Yes. This gotcha. was after Katrina. Right. So I you married him. to him too? No. So I, you're living with him. I was living with him. Yeah. And did he ever come try to find you? He did. Yeah. He did, and he would call and harass me. Yeah. Probably for the first year. Yeah. He never showed up on my doorstep though, yeah. which I was glad. Yeah. And my oldest son lives with me, so. Yeah. And I had dogs, so I figured yeah. Yeah. I was good. Right. You know, and I'm on good terms with my ex husband. We're yeah. friends, friendly, yeah. and you know, yeah. with the kids. Yeah. So he knew what was going on. So right. I knew I had him to yeah. back me up. He had his guns ready. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, just in case. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, when I was moving out, we had to go back for another trip. And he asked when he had called me. Mm-hmm. So I called my youngest son and told him he knows. Mm-hmm. So he apparently called his dad. So his dad shows up. And yeah. Hammond to yeah. help me move. He says, I'm loaded, I'm ready to go. Because yeah. we don't know how he's going to react. He's, and yeah. he's got all kind of guns. He's hunting. Yeah. And we don't, I have no idea how he's going to react. Yeah. You know, you're scared. I'm scared. Yeah. You know, but I knew if I needed to call the cops, you know, yeah. I knew what to do. Yeah. But I didn't want to have to deal with that. All right. So once you got to the North Shore, how did you, how did you get connected with Jesus and the whole life change? What happened to After I moved, um, I was trying to get a new life insurance policy, and yeah. a lady came to my house. She lives in Slidell, and while she was there, she asked me if I had a church home. I was yeah. like, no, I would like one, though. Yeah. She came to Journey. Really? So I can't, that was 2018. Yeah. I started Journey yeah. with her. So you just came to visit one Sunday with your friend? I just came every yeah. Sunday with her. Wow. And then about almost a year later, right. somebody mentioned CR to me. Yeah. And I was like... I don't know what that is. I don't have an addiction. Who was yeah. the Who was the first person who invited you? Angelique. And then, um, after coming with her for a little while, then that's when you met Martha. Are you I, and Martha I worked knew, together? I, yeah, I knew Martha for like ten years. I used to mm-hmm. volunteer with Nami with her. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I ha- I saw her at church one day. I didn't know what church she went to, mm-hmm. um, and we would see each other occasionally. We come different times sometimes yeah and she mentioned cr to me yeah you know and i said she's said, not just for addiction and i'm like okay well i'm yeah. broken yeah <laughs> i'm broken yeah <laughs> no doubt about that right you know so i started coming and never looked back i think that, that may be a common misconception mm-hmm. that people think celebrate recovery is only for people who are trying to overcome addictions but al maybe you want to speak to it celebrate recovery covers every kind of brokenness yeah. Yeah, it's definitely the biggest uh, stigma that we have to overcome at CR is the mm-hmm. fact that people do think that it's it's just for individuals who are alcoholics or drug addictions. Right. And, um, you know, most of the people... So what, what happened the first couple of years, I'd say probably the first two years that CR, w- that our CR was in existence, probably 60 to 70 percent of the people who came were coming because of a drug or an alcohol mm-hmm. addiction right. primarily because that was my past yeah. being you know heavily involved in drugs and alcohol right. so most of the people I was recruiting targeting it like they're people I could really relate to yeah. and uh, and that's how that worked out but after those individuals started coming for a year some two um, and started to gain freedom in Christ over those things you begin to recognize that most of that addiction is distinctly tied to some inner pain. There was some emotional abuse Mm -hmm. that took place, some trauma from a childhood experience or something to that extent. And that's when they begin to recognize, okay, no, that was just, that addiction was the outward manifestation of a a deeper inner problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the last three years or so, I'd say that the tables have turned. So now it's probably 60 to 65% of the people come are not dealing with yeah. drug or alcohol addictions. They're dealing with grief, uh, loss of a loved one, depression, mm-hmm. anxiety, PTSD is pretty big. Um, so most people are dealing with things like that. Mm-hmm. And then there's a definitely a, you know, a handful of people who are dealing with addiction as yeah. well. But mm-hmm. yeah. So five years ago, Christine, when you first started coming, what was your first Sunday like when you came to church? Did you feel welcome? Did you feel I was afraid out of, of everybody. place? Yeah, tell me what your emotions. Um, I hated meet and greet. I will yeah. tell you that. 
<laughs> I try to stay in my row and people just wanted to insist on hugging me. Don't come greet me, people. I, don't I want, didn't want people to. Yeah, don't yeah want so to I meet didn't you. like meet and greet for a long time. Yeah. But um, no, I was afraid to walk in the doors. I wouldn't look at anybody. I'd yeah. sit to the side in the yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it took yeah. me a while to warm up to did people. Did you come every Sunday? Yep, I early did. On? Wow. I did. I right. came every Sunday. At what point did your heart open to the gospel? When, when did that happen to you? I don't know. I, I just knew I loved listening to you. Yeah. And I got so much out of every time you wow. spoke, yeah. I would it would hit me in my heart, something. Yeah. Yeah. And I realized that God got me to CR. God got yeah. me out of the last relationship yeah. because I was too broken right. to know I needed to do that. Yeah. And he Is brought Angelique, a, you know, so I was I was here. And yeah, I, interesting. I that's why he came to sell you life insurance hmm. and you wound up buying eternal that's life right. insurance. That's <laughs> right. How you like that's that? That's the best deal in the How world. You like that? right there, that's right. <laughs> is there a date that you can point at that that's the day that I became a believer, or was it a process you went through? It, I always believed in God. Yeah. I just didn't understand you could have a relationship with God. Uh, yeah. yeah. When, when did that come on? When did that, when did that light come on? Probably really not until CR. Really? Was, yeah. 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 How long were you coming to journey before you went to celebrate recovery? Um, like about a year. A little less than a year. Did you get baptized the first year you were here, or did you wait till baptism? No, I it? didn't. Yeah. No, so when um, was it Martha invited you to see her? Mm-hmm. So you decided to try it one Monday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what was that like your first time there? I had no idea what CR was. Yeah. <laughs> like, why am I here again? I'm like, I had no clue. I didn't yeah. even know why. I, w- I didn't know. I yeah. didn't even know what I was dealing with. Why did Martha with? think you would benefit from it? What do you she think? Martha's just, smart. Yeah. Because she's brilliant. She's yeah. brilliant. She yeah. just yeah. said, yeah. God told her she should mention it to me. So yeah. Martha was a part of my lead team. I remember, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I had, uh, when we first launched CR, I handpicked 18 people, right. knowing that we would have some attrition and it yeah. would you know, dwindle down. So it dwindled from 18 to I think about 12 within two months, three months, something like that. But Martha was a part of that lead team. And, um, and because of her, her past experiences, because of her professional experience, she just knows Mm -hmm. she, she, you know, she, she Mm -hmm. knows people who would uh, benefit from celebrate recovery. Yeah. Yeah, and plus she hears from the Holy Spirit. That's true. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So she invited you to come knowing yeah, we're ten year friendship. She had an idea, but she also had a spiritual inkling mm-hmm. that you would you'd benefit. Yeah, because she from didn't that. really know yeah. much. I I volunteered about four or five years with Nami, and yeah. I taught a class with no, her. What is Nami? It's the National Alliance for Mental Illness. Okay, gotcha. And um, she actually worked for Nami, mm-hmm. and I taught a class with her. And then I was on the board of directors for three years. I see. Um, until my depression got so bad, I just didn't have nothing to contribute. So when yeah. my term came up I just I, said, I don't have nothing to contribute right. what year did you did that happen how long ago 2013 I think yeah so Around you struggled with you struggled with depression until it got to the point it just controlled your life then it, huh? I was just yeah. yeah my soul was you, you just gone you just yeah empty yeah yeah there was nothing left to me yeah at the end so you came to journey you reconnected with God in a real way you mm-hmm. got it brought into deeper intimate relationships with celebrate recovery Mm -hmm. what happened in celebrate recovery that really put you on the road to healing learning how to it free to share yeah that you're not the only person yeah and i had i did have to learn to accept god that he loved me yeah i had a hard time with that really because I in people say, well, just imagine him holding you in his arms and comfort. I said, I don't know what that feels like. Yeah. So it, that was hard for me. To, couldn't, you know, couldn't imagine. I didn't know what that. Fe- like, how yeah. am I supposed to imagine if I don't know what that is? Mm-hmm. You know. Right. And was was there a day of when it came real to you that okay, I know God loves me. It was probably probably six months or so into wow. CR. So you just really just oh, I was bared down, huh? Yeah. I just, wow. it was hard to give up those old things. Yeah. They were ingrained in me. Yeah. You know. So what what do you think was the uh, driving force of that? Was it just you just sticking it out until Jesus answered your prayer? Sticking it out and doing the steps and the yeah. principles. Yeah. Learning, sharing, yeah. learning, peeling back the layers, learning yeah. about me. So in your small group, mm-hmm. you had time just to say what it was. Yes. Yeah. So yes. I, I think... You know, sometimes we look for a moment, we look for an instant when everything finally clicks. But oftentimes, especially for people who've 
dealt with ongoing depression, people who've dealt with ongoing abuse from a variety of people over mm -hmm. the, you know, all these abusive relationships, all these people who you put trust in and love in, who didn't treat you the way that you mm -hmm. deserve to be treated, all those sorts of things. Sometimes we look for a moment mm -hmm. when it all just made sense, but it's not an intellectual ascension no. where, oh, I, now I understand. It's not that at all. It's a rewiring and a renewing yes. of the mind that took place over a process. It took right. place over a period yeah. of time. Yeah. So uh, I think all of those things, I think the Lord will show us one day, mm -hmm. this is when it really all shifted and changed right. for you. But aware of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So some of us, I think, are able to pinpoint, hey, when I heard you say that, yeah. man, that really just sparked something. I felt it. I can look to my backyard when I prayed. But you know, even when I looked to my backyard when I prayed and said, God, if you're real, you know, why does my little girl have a heroin addict for a daddy? Even prior to that, I came to church for a year and a half. Right. So the way that I often think about it is, you know, it, God was moving in my life, mm -hmm. and it was like a like a combination lock. So the combination lock, you turn it a few times to the right, you hit the first set of numbers. Well, somewhere over that year and a half that I was coming the journey, yeah. I hit that first set of numbers, and I have no idea when that happened. Yeah. But the gospel was going forth. I was still in addiction. I still had a, a wrong, unbiblical belief mm -hmm. systems. But you preach the gospel every Sunday, mm -hmm. and the word is a seed. Our hearts are yes. receptive and ready yeah. to receive. Yeah. The the seed wants to grow, so the seed was being planted each and every week. Mm -hmm. right. Sooner or later, it hit the second set of numbers. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't know when. Maybe that was a year into the process. Yeah. And then for Come me, on. I can isolate it down to an into hey in my backyard in September of '08. I know for sure everything opened, it unlocked, mm -hmm. and I saw and believed. Yeah. But some people, it's that process that that goes on, and it's like yeah. you could tell something changed because she comes to me and she says, "Hey, I think I'm ready to take the next step. I think I'm ready to get involved. I want to start <laughs> serving. I want to start being a part of what's going yeah. on here." Mm -hmm. You know, Martha comes to me and says. Hey, uh, the Lord spoke to me, and I think it's my time yeah. to take a step back from leadership, yeah. so some other people can step up yeah. into leadership. And that's, you know, she be she became my Martha. Wow, <laughs> wow, yeah. And, uh, how long? So how long have you been a part of CR now? Four years. Yeah, part amen. of CR. Yeah. So Martha was here until Martha was here. I think for the first three years. Does that sound about right? First two and a half years. Yeah. yeah. And then mm -hmm. um, she was still here in 2020 when we we were doing it online, yeah. like through Zoom or whatever. Right. Yeah. But I'm not. I think it was later 2020 she stepped away. Yeah. I think that's when it was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I remember mm -hmm. the moment we had a worship experience. Um, we were in the other auditorium, yeah. and um, and it was one of those nights which there aren't many, but there were there have been a few nights at CR where. I crumbled up the plan yeah. and threw it away <laughs> while we were on stage leading <laughs> yeah. worship. Yeah. And we just let the Holy Spirit do what mm -hmm. he was doing in people's yeah. hearts. Yeah. Right. And I gave an altar call and we had 12, I think we did baptisms that night. We mm -hmm. had 12 people come yeah. to the altar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and that was the night Martha said, hey, yeah. she said, I think the Lord just spoke to me. I said, praise the Lord. What did he say? She said, it's time for me to back out and get out of ministry. Let someone else. Take. I was like, that might not be the Lord. Yeah, not the <laughs> but it was. it was. You know, we're always looking for the big mo I'm yeah. I'm looking for. Right. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. So what has Jesus done in your life in the last four years? How's your depression? How is your. Um, my your depression um, is under. It's in control. Yeah. You know, I met. I do have to take meds, but yeah. very little. Yeah. Um, I've learned to love myself first wow. of all. Wow. And learn to that I deserve to be loved by God. Yeah. You know, and that I deserve everything yeah. He gives me. Yeah. You know, and I've learned to understand forgiveness. Yeah. You know, not only His forgiveness, me forgiving myself, yeah. me forgiving others. Wow. Because in my head, you forgive somebody, you say it's okay for what they did. Yeah. I didn't realize for a long time that that's yeah. not why you're doing it. Yeah. So forgiveness is not really letting them off the hook. No. More than it's letting the fence go out of your soul. Yes, taking yeah. that, yeah. breaking those chains, as they say. Right. You know, lifting that burden off your shoulders. Yeah. And that's probably a real common misconception mm -hmm. is that forgiveness means what they did was okay. Yeah. yeah. And that's, you know, coming from abuse is yeah. all the yeah. people in my life. I'd like, yeah. why should I forgive them? Yeah, from childhood. Right. Tell, through your marriages. Right. All your relationships, you never knew what it was like to be loved right. and valued and cared right. for. Right. So you brought all that brokenness to Jesus. Yep. And Jesus 
did what broke the chain. Nobody else could do. Yeah, he yeah. Um, gave me peace. I yeah. have peace now in my yeah. life. Wow. You know, and I I know I deserve things that he wants for me. Yeah. You know that, um, yeah. and I know I also don't have to prove to him that I deserve anything, which I was used to doing. Trying yeah. to make people love me right. by doing, to, doing, earn it, earn the love, and yeah. I realize I don't have to do that with God. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, you've said some really important things about what everybody has in common. We all want to be loved. Mm-hmm. We all want to be valued, mm-hmm. and we all want to be accepted. All those things are just common mm-hmm. human needs. Right. That all the experiences you had blocked all of that. those three needs from mm-hmm. ever being met. Yeah. You know, and that you were able to. Uh, raise three k- kids and have a 27 year career in the middle of all your pain is nothing short that of was god remarkable. too <laughs> that was god <laughs> just keeping, remarkable. i don't know how i didn't lose my job yeah i'll be honest are your mind well i was close to losing that yeah <laughs> i won't that, lie that you held on and mm-hmm. that and that jesus found you there and that you made probably one of the hardest decisions to make in your life and that is to allow him to change you Mm -hmm. you know i think that's probably the key is that when you acknowledge that i can't fix this but i gotta trust jesus enough that while i'm exposing it he's Mm -hmm. gonna fix it that's that takes a lot of well especially when you like to control everything which is who i am (laughs) yeah so you like to i don't want to give up control because giving up control wasn't good in my life right so i had to give him control and that was hard (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's amazing how we fool ourselves that oh yeah that we're in control (laughs) Yeah. Are you ever really? No. Yeah. 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 And I like to tell the girls in my group that, yeah, I thought I had it all together and I could do it on my own. And look how that turned out. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And God allows us to, you know, operate under that fantasy until he's able to reveal to yeah. us the real truth that we need him. Yeah. We need him. Tell me about your life now. So you're you're still working. Your kids are all grown. You're yeah. leading. You're a leader at at, um, at Celebrate See, Recovery. Mm-hmm. You lead a small group. I lead a small group, Tell yes. us all the things that God's doing in you and through you. What's going on? Um, one of the things that happened was with my children. Um, once I, sh- I mean, they, unfortunately, I'm not able to get them. To mm-hmm. turn to God yet, yeah. but um, they've always respected and supported me, and mm-hmm. they see what's going on, and yeah. they're very proud of yeah. what, what I'm doing. Yeah. But when I shared my testimony with them, yeah. all of it, yeah. they never knew most of that. Wow. Instead of pushing them away, we've gotten closer. Yeah. They know the real me now, yeah. which they never knew before. Man. You know, they knew whoever I was pretending to be. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's when, and that's. I mean, obviously, I, I think openness, honesty, and transparency. You know, things that you learn being a part of CR mm-hmm. are. Um, you know, those are those are keys that are helping you to have authentic relationships right. with your adult children now. Mm-hmm. And I think, unfortunately, a lot of people go through life and never gain that real authentic relationship, even right. with their adult children. We yeah. grew up in the same house. We lived in, and they don't feel like that. You know, you, you know, part of your problem connecting to God early on was because of your past experience. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you how many men come to CR, and they may not have experienced what you did, but because they had a faulty relationship with their father, their earthly father, they can't connect to right. their heavenly father properly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's essentially the same issue. It it's is. essentially yeah. the mm-hmm. same thing. So true. You know, I think it happens probably more now in this culture than any other time because there's so many fatherless children or so many children raised in a broken home or a dysfunctional home Mm -hmm. that I think Pastor Al said it so well, the way you see your earthly father affects greatly how you see your heavenly father. Mm -hmm. And some people just can't imagine how God can love them when my own dad couldn't love me. Totally. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it becomes a stronghold. Yeah. So one of the key things that we want to teach at CR, there are a lot of there are twelve steps. Obviously, there are eight biblical principles that everything is built on. But just personally, for me, one of the things that I kind of inject into yeah. our our culture at Celebrate Recovery has to do with teaching people first and foremost the, the, who is God really, mm-hmm. because many like you. So you said a moment ago, like, well, I always believed in God. And most people who grow up in South Louisiana will say the same thing. Mm-hmm. I've always believed in God. But the reality is when I sit down and speak to them, they have a faulty understanding of who that God is. Yes. So it's mm-hmm. God created in their own image. Mm-hmm. Whatever they think about right. God is whatever they heard in movies and TV and music, right. past experiences. Yeah. Yeah. 
So the first thing I try to address at Celebrate Recovery is who is God according to the Bible and what are your beliefs about God and do they line up? And if not, you have some time to make adjustments. Right. Right. But number two is who are you in relation to God? How do you see yourself? How do you understand yourself? Are you still holding on to what the world has spoken over you? Past abusive relationships have spoken over mm-hmm. you. Are you still holding on? Is that your identity? Yeah. Or are you going to adopt the identity that, that God speaks over you? And what I find, I, th- I really believe it's part of our success at CR, is when people really come to know the character and the nature of who God is, and when they really begin to, to um, disassociate from their past identity and really adopt mm-hmm. who God says they are, yeah. when they learn to live as a son and a daughter of the Most High God, all the other stuff becomes manageable. Yeah. Addiction, depression, mm-hmm. grief, all of that stuff, it's like you know, yeah. water off of a duck's back. Yeah. So, right. And that's, that, that's part of the so process good. that Christine helps me with. So Christine yeah. will not only help lead small groups, but she, as she said a moment ago, like, oh, I'm really into control. And we kind of laughed that <laughs> off. Well, no, there's a very, like, there's a, an amazing thing about the way she's wired yeah. as it relates to organization, as yeah. it relates to, um, you know, thinking things through systematically mm-hmm. and organizationally and the process to do things. Yeah. Like, I'm way more relational. Yeah. And the idea of sitting down and getting behind a computer and making a spreadsheet yeah. and doing all these, like, hey, Christine. <laughs> You're good at this, Christine. I'm good at that. This yeah. is how you're wired. Let's let's use that strength, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think a lot of times people will say, "Well, I'm not the charismatic speaker. I can't get on stage, and I can't lead worship, or I can't do this." God wired each and every one of us for a specific purpose within the body of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And she came that. to the kingdom. She came mm-hmm. to celebrate recovery with unique gifts yeah. that we had to discover. And then allow her to use within CR. And that's what she's been doing for these last four years. So she's basically my right hand at CR. She does all the scheduling of volunteers. I I just ask her. I say, hey, do we have enough volunteers this weekend? She (laughs) says, yeah, everybody's here. Or Sal's not coming. So she takes care of all those things. And she'll she'll write it off like, oh, I do a little bit here. It's like. Yeah. No, if you weren't doing that, yeah. like this thing would, sh- this sink yeah. would ship. Yeah. <laughs> this ship would sink. Just like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's beautiful how God took what you were already gifted at and now is using it for his kingdom. Yes. You know, yes. not only did he change your life, now he's changing lives through you. Yes. Man, that's the power of the gospel because it's, it you know, it's generational and it's yes. exponential. You know, one life touches 10 and 10 touches a thousand, you know, so God's touching your heart and all the influence you have now, not over just the leaders that you're leading, but all the people that you're ministering to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, let's, let's wrap it up then, Christine. So tell me, uh, at, as we finish this up, what is the biggest thing that God's done in the last five years since you've been a believer? What is the one thing that you're just, you know, so grateful? He has grateful? Sh- shown me things I didn't... Uh, people may have told me good things too sometimes. Yeah. I didn't believe them. Yeah. He's shown me things I can do, yeah. even though I'm scared to death sometimes. <sighs> All the time. Yeah. See, and I'm one that won't get on stage. Yeah. <laughs> but um, he's, he's he's just show me who I really can eyes. be yeah. that I never thought I would be. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. I yeah. never thought I would be leading a group. Yeah. I mean, I don't like getting in front of people. Yeah. You know, so. And not only that, you're, you're leading all the group because you're administering right. all of the, you know, processes mm-hmm. and structures and stuff. And he's allowing me to show other women yeah. that there's hope. Yeah. And that... You don't yeah. have to have it all together. Yeah. You don't have to have it all it's, together. It, that's something really, really neat about God's love is that while we're busy rescuing other people, He's busy rescuing us, mm-hmm. you know? So as you're serving, helping other women, in the process, God is just transforming you from the inside out, you know? And that's mm-hmm. that's a beautiful thing about salvation because yeah. God's always interested in our redemption. And that story takes on a new chapter every time we you know grow into another level in faith you know so we wanted you to know how proud we are of you christine and how much we celebrate the 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 transformation that we all see in your life and how grateful we are for what you add to 
the body here, the value you add to the kingdom and all the women and all the people that you're serving here at Journey. And I just thought your story needs to be told and people need to hear that there's hope. So if somebody watching right now finds themselves going through what you've been through, through, uh, you know, neglect or uh, abuse or mm-hmm. emotional trauma, what what word of advice would you give a person that's where you used to be? Come to God. Yeah? Yes. Come to God. Let God help you through this. Let God show you the way. Yeah. Show you the freedom. Man, that may be the best He's piece the of advice. He's the only one who can do it. Yeah. Even when people think there's no hope in Christ, there's always hope. Mm-hmm. There's always an answer. You know, right past us giving up, if we just hang on, yeah. you know, and trust that God is going to do what only God can do. Pastor, you want to close out any word of encouragement or any word of hope you want to give to people before we end today? Yeah, just this phrase keeps echoing through my mind that we're not valuable because of what we do for God, but we're valuable because we belong to Him. Ooh. And there's just a lot of value that Christine brings to the table. It isn't just about gifts or or talents or abilities. We all have them, and they should be used in the body of Christ. But God says you're valuable, not because of what you're doing, but simply because you belong to me. Yeah. Man, that and that is a that is is really understanding God's love. He loves you, period. Mm -hmm. And then because of his love, he can, you know, use the gifts that he's given you. But it's so good that you know, our value is not based on, you know, what we're worth, but it's based on what he loves about us. Yeah, because we belong to him. It's simply yeah. because we belong we're to his. him. Yeah, Jesus' blood was shed for us, and right. that's why we're valuable. Yeah, so good. Well, thank you for joining us today for our podcast. Uh, Christine Burns shared her story today, and what a beautiful story of redemption it is. And thanks, Pastor Al, for joining us. And if you are facing any kind of the battles that you and Christine talk about, we want you to know there's hope today for you. Mm -hmm. If you live locally here at the North Shore, we invite you to come to journey and join a group of fellow strugglers because we all have found hope in Christ. We all brought our pain and our brokenness to him and he's transformed us from the inside out. Uh, you can find driving directions at jf.church or better yet, download the journey app, go to your app store down, uh, type in journey fellowship church. You'll see our app. Uh, you can download it. It's Compliments of Journey, and it's loaded with great resources. There's past sermons. There's a small group list. There's activities and events to get involved in and all kinds of information about us. Maybe you want to watch a service online before you come visit in person. You can do that. You can even watch us live on Sunday. Uh, you can watch the online campus right from the app or on YouTube or wherever social media that you can find Journey on. You can visit a couple times uh, digitally before you come visit in in person and also celebrate recovery meets every monday night right here at journey it's a community of people who are overcoming ha- uh, hurts habits and hang-ups uh, and it is a great place for you to find hope for whatever you're going through and the hope that we all have found is in christ today and that's our prayer is that you would have an encounter with jesus christ if you meet him your eternity will not be the same. It'll be great. So I'm Doug McAllister for Journey Fellowship Church, and it's been a pleasure to be with you today. Join us again real soon in the future. Until then, we'll see you next time.